Welcome guys to a new video in which I'm going to show you nine things that you need to learn to master Android development. And these nine things are the things that you will need all the time when you build apps. And I don't want to include the Kotlin language between them because simply you can't even build an app without Kotlin. So you need Kotlin at first. So just keep that in mind. Now let's get started with the nine things. And the first one is Jetpack Compose. You need to learn Jetpack Compose to build UI. And previously we used to use XML for that, but now we use Jetpack Compose in which we build UI with Kotlin. So learn Jetpack Compose. There are a bunch of tutorials, a bunch of playlists, and I already have a Jetpack Compose playlist that will take you from the beginning to the end, along with building user interfaces, like a banking app user interface, a spending app user interface, a rental card user interface, and so on. So watch my playlist in which you understand everything, build that UI with me, and you will be good with Jetpack Compose. Also for XML, you will actually need XML at some point in the future. So learn Jetpack Compose, learn to build UI with it and also learn some XML because sometimes you need it. If you have to work on an existing code base which UI is built on XML, then you might need to adjust some things or change the UI or something like so. But that is an XML, so you need to understand a little bit of XML and it's really good to know that because it's still used until now and I still actually sometimes need to use it, especially if I have to work on an existing code base as they said. So that's the first thing, which is Jetpack Compose. The second thing is Android Fundamentals. Everything from activities, fragments, work manager, alarm manager, program services, broadcast receivers, things that you will just need when you build apps like notifications and so on. I do have videos for these Android fundamentals as well in which I explain things like work manager, how to create notifications and so on. I will also leave a link in the description for that in which you can just watch those and learn how to do that. So you need these fundamentals. They are very, very necessary in your apps. And at this point, you already know to build UI, you know the Android fundamentals. I really encourage you to build functional apps now, like a calculator app, or just find ideas of a beginner projects that you can build when you just start learning something, okay? So build apps, and that's how you really learn, by building apps. The next thing I want to tell you about is navigation between screens in Jetpack Compose. So you learn navigation, create screens, navigate between them. That's also an important thing. So now we know three things. The next thing is going to be learning Room Database and making API calls, whether it's of it or Keto. This is really, really important. Probably every app out there needs some sort of database to save user data, to save items, to save things. So learn to save those items or that data locally in device with Room Database. That is a must to know. You will need that a lot, as I said. Also, learn to make API calls, fetch data from APIs. Like for example, if you want to build a weather app, where are you going to get that weather data from? From an API, a pre-existing API, you just build or you just write the retrofit code or Ktor code to get that data from the weather API. Okay, so learn these two things. Now we have four things. Now, the next thing I want to mention is Kotlin flows. They are also very important and you will need them. And these flows help you to handle asynchronous tasks because with them, you can emit multiple values for something over time. So let's say you want to get this data, the weather data from the API. So what are the multiple values? First of all, you want to emit a value that is now you start loading. The second value is that you did load the data and then you emit the data. The second value that you want to emit is that now you stop loading. Or if you have an error, there is an error. Or another example, let's say you have a counter that just counts from one to 10. So every second you want to emit a value, which is the new value of the counter. So one, two, three, and so on. So that's what you use flows for. Now, I guess these are five things. The next thing is Kotlin routines, which are again for asynchronous programming, but with them you can execute multiple tasks, especially tasks that take a lot of time at the same time. So let's say you want to make a network call to get the data from the API, but this network call will take four seconds. If you just make it in your main thread, your app will just freeze until you get the data because the API call will block the execution of the tasks in your thread. So you want to put that API call in a quarantine and then what will happen is that your app, the execution of your app will be smooth. There will be no freezing elements or so, but also you are making the API calls 
once you get the car or once you get the data you emit that with a flow so you need these coroutines and luckily i already have a course that covers all these essential skills like jetpack compose flows room database apis and also the skills that i will talk about later like clean architecture and so on and i covered them in that course by building a large scale industry level android app and by the end of this course you will not only learn how to apply and understand these technologies and concepts but you will also learn how to apply them together use them together glow them in an industry level app and with the 25 percent discount that is going for the next seven days you can join us whether you have theoretical knowledge that you want to turn into practical experience or even if you have this experience and you want to boost it and take it to the next level to become ready for the underwood industry you can find the link to the course in the description and now the next thing i want to talk about which is maybe the sixth or the seventh thing so yeah the seventh thing is dependency injection using dogger health or queen so simply dependency injection is giving a class the instance variables it depends on where it needs let's say a class needs to show some data but that data is in some other class so we can only get that data from another class so what we do we create an instance of this class and we inject it or we pass it to this class via the constructor that is dependency injection and you may say that's something we do all the time but in a large scale app it's really complex to do that manually you need to use a library like dagger health or queen which makes it a lot more easier and simply you can easily swap dependencies for different purposes like testing and so on and also reuse them so that's a thing that you need and then the next thing i want to talk about is clean architecture which is really important i don't want to talk about how important clean architecture is if you want to get a job or work as a freelancer because the screen architecture separates your app into several layers which are data layer domain layer and presentation layer each layer handles a specific thing and each layer is isolated from the others and the data layer we handle all the data specific things like making api calls making database calls or saving data in our database and so on all this data things or even if we just want to access a service that is outside of our app like for example work manager that is an underwood specific thing that is outside of our app so we need to put that in the data layer on the other hand the presentation layer is of course responsible of handling all the view or the things that the user can see for example screens the logic of our screen like the view model and all the stuff that the user can see all the ui needs to be in the presentation layer and then in the middle we have the domain layer which is let's say the brain of our architecture so both the data and the presentation layer are allowed to access domain but then domain is not allowed to access neither of them and also data is not allowed to access presentation or presentation is allowed to access data that's not possible only data is allowed to access domain and presentation is allowed to access domain so that's how it goes because domain is the central layer in which we have all the business logic all the use cases all the abstractions that we need that we can then create different implementations for testing or different purposes so this is clean architecture in general that is really great if we want to make our app scalable and testable and maintainable so the last thing i want to talk about now is testing we need to test our apps to make sure that they actually function as expected and to make our app testable we need to know all the other things that i mentioned like dependency injection clean architecture coroutines and so on especially dependency injection and clean architecture we need to make our app built in a really great structure to make it testable because without testing we may just send the final app to the client or publish it to the google play but then we get crashes and errors or bugs and to avoid that we make sure that we write test cases for our app from unit tests to test single units like a single class or a single function to integration tests to test multiple things working together multiple classes for example and then end-to-end -end tests or ui tests to test our ui okay so this is testing and it's really important as well and you will be asked for that if you want to apply for a job or so so these are the nine things that you would need to know if you want to master underwood development and the most important of this all is to build apps nothing will really teach you but building apps once you learn something go ahead and build an app find an idea on the internet and build something out of it put that in your github accounts as a repository that's really important build apps just all I can say because you can't understand coroutines unless you use them in a real project you can't understand clean architecture unless you build an app with clean architecture and then you try testing it you find things are not great you change your, your structure and so on until you come up with the greatest 
structure for your app using clean architecture. And I also want to mention things like MVI design passion or MVVM design passion, but I just put that along with clean architecture because in the presentation layer of our app, we need to structure that in a way like MVI or MVVM. You may also need to learn these, or even you can put these as the thin things to know, but also MVR or MVVM design passion, these are also needed for your presentation lives. So this is what you need to know if you want to become ready for the Android industry. And also while you are learning and building apps, you may not know how to do things or you may make a mistake but no one tells you so the solution for that is to watch someone doing it and learn from them and then build it by your own and to do that you can check my premium course in the description in which we will build a large scale app so you would see how i do it and also you will learn how to do things like separating your app into layers dependency injection building compose ui and so on so you can confidently build your app later i also have all the playlists for testing, dependency injection, navigation, and flows and quoting and all of that, I will leave you the links in the description. So these are the things that you need. And if you want to support me, subscribe to this channel and leave a like to this video. See you in the next video. Bye.